Look, thanks everyone for um, for having me, and great to see the roll up that you've got. Um, you know, to the this Zoom meeting, it's a bit of an unusual way to uh, give a presentation, so please bear with me on it. Um, I'm happy to take questions at the end. Uh, I've got a short presentation which sort of touches on the highlights of the project and the background to it and where we're up to. Um, but I'll try and get through that just in time to allow uh, enough time for questions at the end um, and you know, give you the ability to sort of ask down whichever path uh, is of particular interest to you. So thanks very much, uh, Wes um, and Caroline, uh, for that uh, introduction. And I'm really looking forward to, to hearing the questions. So I'll get into the, the presentation. Um, just to, to start off, to give a bit of context, you know, what, why is the project uh, happening? Well, I guess it's all about the growth that we're seeing in Queensland and Southeast Queensland in particular. And when you look at Southeast Queensland, really that growth is happening in the, uh, the um, outer fringe of the CBD area. But what we're seeing is the majority of that growth uh, that's around, you know, in those suburbs that are around the wider part of CBD. But where we're sort of seeing the jobs growth is obviously still in the core. And what that means is people basically have a, um, uh, have, hang on, now that I'm in control, I've got people, anybody who's arriving late has had, needs me to admit them in with. <laughs> anyway, I'll just, okay, so what we're sort of seeing is um, this uh, circumstance where the, um, the, uh, jobs growth is in the middle, middle of the core and the population growth is around the um, around the site. So, stay on. And thanks, Graham, for admitting those people. Yeah, that, that's right. I'll keep doing it if they, if they pop up. Um, look, the other aspect too is you get into the, the inner city and if you look at that, this is the existing rail network and really there's one crossing across the, rail, across the river. Um, and what that means is pretty much every train that comes into the CBD, whether it's from the south, whether it's from down the Ipswich line where you guys are, or whether it's from the north, all has to go through Roma Street Central and Fortitude Valley. And then on top of that, we've only got the one crossing of the river, which is the Merivale Bridge, which was built in the late 70s. So you've got a situation where essentially you've got this bottleneck in the middle of the, of the rail network which limits your capacity to be able to put more trains on the network. And the reason we want to put more trains on the network is to make the level of service a more frequent service uh, and create that sort of turn up and go type environment where if you go to a railway station, you don't want to check, don't need to check the timetable, you know that a train will come. But if while ever we've got this situation where um, the, uh, the bottleneck is there, we're basically constrained by the capacity of the Merivale Bridge, which is 21, 20 trains per hour, and it's already running at around about um, uh, 21 trains per hour at the moment. So if you look at this uh, view here, the blue line then shows you where Cross River Rail is going to be. And the, and the blue section is essentially the, um, the underground component. So it starts to go underground from uh, the um, the this area there at Dutton Park, and then you can sort of see that it then uh, goes through uh, Bogger Road, down through Woolongabba, through Albert Street in the middle of the CBD, then Roma Street, and then it surfaces back around on the exhibition line and then through the exhibition station. So that's sort of the main extent of it. Um, but what we're, we've also got is upgrades that are happening further to the south, and I'll talk about those in a second. But this, this here really provides that duplicated capacity where you're able to have more trains get through that bottleneck. And the best way to do that is basically using uh, an underground tunnel that cuts underneath the river and goes through the middle of the CBD where, the, where people really want to be to, not on the fringe of the CBD. Okay, and so the project itself is, will provide about 7,000 jobs. Uh, we've already got about 2,000 people working on the, on the site at the moment um, and about 450 apprentices. We've uh, already got more than 200 um, subcontractors working on site and we expect that to move up well over the four to 500 contractors, uh, subcontractors. So in the current environment, probably one thing that we're a little bit nervous of uh, for the project was when the COVID-19 sort of came in and the practices were, were being 
looked at and which businesses and sectors were being shut down uh, or you know paused or put into hibernation whichever way you want to put it we we're a little bit anxious about what was going to happen with our project so the contractors put in place um, some pretty stringent controls they put in spacings for people uh, they if on the sites themselves everybody who came onto site had to have temperature checks they um, obviously had uh, you know hygiene stations for um, hand sanitization but what happened is when they uh, were doing lunches and and um, uh, and uh, where people would go to the crib rooms but they were splitting the shifts and what it meant is when someone would go a group would go for lunch then the, between lunch times uh, the cleaners would come in and clean the crib room so that the next people could come through. They also meant segregated so people couldn't move between sites. They would only be allocated to particular sites. There's a range of different things they put in place. And what that's meant is we've been able to keep our project on foot and it's been able to continue to employ those 2,000 people, but more importantly, also keep on with the work and keep on with the program. So just looking at the project itself, Starting from the south, um, it's just worth noting, it's not just the tunnel, but we're also upgrading six stations. Um, so if anybody's been to say the, um, the uh, tennis center and gone to Yorong Pili station and seen that upgrade that's happened to that Yorong Pili station where there's the lifts and the, um, uh, the, the more, um, you know, I suppose, higher quality uh, access to and from that station. Well, that's what we're looking to do to, for these six stations as well, which is basically from Fairfield uh, all the way through to Salisbury to the south. So that, that work will be done as part of our project and there'll be um, platform levels will be raised. So the platform will be more in line with the step of the train, um, but also there'll be improved um, parking facilities and also improved um, uh, you know, elevator and, uh, and stair uh, facilities there. Onto the project proper, um, Bogger Road is the first of the underground stations and it's um, adjacent to the Eco Sciences building or near the old um, Bogger Road Jail for those who are more familiar with it. And uh, this site there will also see a connection or a pedestrian cycle, uh, pedestrian and cycle bridge across to the PA hospital. So you'll be able to catch the train to Bogger Road station, uh, alight at Bogger Road and then walk across to the PA hospital. Uh, it's a little bit of a walk, but it's um, it, it's basically allowing it to get a better connection to that hospital and allow people um, to either use it to visit the hospital or people who are working at the hospital. This is a bit of a, an artist's impression of what it would look like out the front of the station if you're approaching the station, and you'll start to see a bit of a consistency of this design. The good interface here at Bogger Road is between the different, so you'll be able to move between this station, Park Road's um, station, and also the uh, the Bogger Road busway, um, which would is that connection across to uh, University of Queensland. Here's a, a photo that was taken recently, um, looking at the site. So this is from the PA hospital site, looking back across to the Eco Sciences site, and that's basically looking down the alignment of where the tunnel will go. The work that's going on there at the moment is is site preparation. They're doing piling ready for the excavation. Um, and also installing site sheds. So we're still in early days, but um, but there's still quite a lot of work has happened there. I think over 100 piles have already been installed onto that site. You can sort of see um, just on the other side of the Eco Sciences building, I'm not sure you can see my cursor, um, but there's three stories of site sheds there. So that's getting all prepared for the workforce that's going to hit this site fairly soon. Wool and Gabba is the next station uh, underground. And so finally, um, the Gabba will have its own train station. Uh, and the thing about Wool and Gabba as a suburb also, it's sort of lacking a bit of a, a town centre feel to it. So part of the thinking around the development here at Wool and Gabba is how do we not only give uh, the Gabba a new uh, railway station, but also give it a new town centre as well that can be focused and give a much better connection to um, the, the Gabba Stadium and, and make it part of that local community. So down at ground level, that, that again is the, uh, the look at the station and you can sort of see those sort of more airy, um, open air style of uh, station there. And the idea is we've got about 6.5 hectares of developable sites. So the potential is to do um, you know, residential and commercial um, with restaurants and um, 
and bars at the ground level and a pedestrian walkway that can connect directly across to Wollongabba Stadium itself. Here's a view from, if, if you imagine it's, it's from one of the towers at the Gabba itself, looking back at the site. And if you look at this, in the distance is the station box itself where all the piling has been completed there and they've started the excavation. This ramp here is essentially a ramp which will go down into the station to allow them to move um, equipment in and out, but it'll also be where the conveyor goes that uh, will extract all the uh, spoil from the tunnel boring machines which will be heading uh, towards the city. Uh, those uh, spoil from the tunnel boring machines will be deposited into a um, shed off to the uh, right hand side of that, um, that area and then the trucks will take that spoil off to its uh, deposited site and, and at the moment they're, they're looking at different sites but it's more than likely to be the airport precinct or the um, trade coast precinct that's the that's the more likely area that's going to go to so going to albert street so the albert street station is one that's um of particular interest because this will this will actually become the most popular station for um, commuters in brisbane essentially what you're doing is you're putting a station right on the intersection of albert street and mary street and um, if you imagine you're one block away from the new queen's wharf development you're one and a half blocks from queen street mall and you're also um, one and a half blocks from the riverside area as well so it's it's really good central location and if you look at this uh, map here that really illustrates where it is i mean the cbd is is on that peninsula and finally we'll have a station if you can see where central and roma street stations are you can see that they're not really in the cbd whereas this will put a new underground station right in the middle of the cbd and essentially less than five minutes walk you know to, to most destinations around the cbd so we'd see people like um uh, you were talking about qut it'll be very popular for qut students i know when i went to qut i had to walk from central station it was a good 15 20 minute walk and i wore out quite a few shoes getting down there um, so getting it uh well connected right in the middle of the cbd is a uh, is going to be a, an excellent location Here's the picture of the work to date. So, we've, so all the buildings have been demolished, um, and you may recall there was the, there was uh, there there were a range of different shops there. So I think um, there was a, a ski snow shop there, and there was a, um, a, a small office building off to the left hand side. All of those have actually been demolished now, and uh, they're getting site preparation for the excavation. That circular. Um, uh, area that you can see on the right hand side that's really where the portal is that they're going to excavate down to the um the tunnel uh caverns themselves so that'll go down around about uh the 30 meters to the um to the tunnel cavern and then then um uh, excavate across and the length of the tunnel and the station on albert street is about 220 meters so if you imagine essentially from elizabeth street most of the way down towards the Botanic Gardens, that's the, the length of the tunnel. So it's quite a, quite a large facility and it's about 35 metres below the surface there, all in rock. Uh, the next major station is at Roma Street Station. Now, Roma Street Station will become this sort of great uh, interface point where all the different trains, surface train, below ground train, the buses, the long distance rail, XPT, the airport train, all of those will come to uh, to uh, Roma Street. So Roma Street will become the sort of the new Grand Central of Brisbane, and it'll be a place where interchange uh, will happen between different modes of transport. The Brisbane Metro bus, the new one that's being proposed, will go through there, plus all the other suburban buses that come through the city will pass through that point. So it'll be a great place to see that, um, that interchange uh, happening. So at the ground level, again, you can see this is the new Roma Street station. So if you've been past there recently, you'd see we're in the middle of demolishing the transit centre. And so the idea is to try and create a much more attractive front door to Roma Street and make it more like a, 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 a um, you know, something that's attractive and, and has that large open air feel rather than the sort of the dark cavernous way that the tra transit centre is at the moment. Here's an image that shows the demolition that's underway at the moment. Now, 
the um, the buildings that have got the wrap around them, the white buildings, they are the um, the one in the foreground is the uh, Hotel Gen, and it's well on the way to demolition. The one in the middle um, is the uh, the East Tower, and then the one in the far distance is the is the West Tower, and they've already started demolition as well. So they're they're well underway. However, this it's about twelve months worth of demolition of those buildings. In the foreground, you can see a new shed there. Now that's a um, an acoustic shed inside which the uh, excavation uh, is starting to happen for the tunnel. So they excavate down about 18 metres and then they're going to start excavating across and digging uh, those 220 metre caverns that the um, stations will be. And they'll be basically diagonally underground under the existing um, uh, platforms and sort of reaching back towards where that shed is there. So um, the demolition of those buildings, as I said, will take about a year. Uh, the new front door of the Roma Street station will be more or less across the road from the police station, um, but it'll be far more attractive at a ground level. So the safety will be a key to it as well. One area that's being talked about at um, this precinct is the potential for Brisbane Live to go here. That's the new um, entertainment arena. It's not funded at the moment, but it's something as identified as a location which could be for a replacement for Boondle to be built here at Roma Street. And then the final station um, in, the, in the mix is the exhibition station. So th there's already a station at ECA, but if you're um, uh, aware of it, it's only ever operated during events like the ECA, whereas what we're going to be doing is putting a permanent station which will operate 24-7 and it will effectively become the Royal Brisbane Hospital Station and also the one that services the likes of King Street and Spring Hill and Albert Park. Uh, and so it'll, be, it'll become effectively a new transport hub that uh, can be used to connect into that location. And here's a, here's a view at the ground level. So that uh, walkway underneath obviously is, is where, if you've been to the Eka, you'd, you'd remember there is a bit of a walkway that you go underneath the railway station. Well, obviously it's gonna be a lot bigger, the walkway, and that gives you the connection past through to O'Connell Terrace and then down to King Street and allow pedestrians, when there's no Eka event on, to pass through. But more importantly, there's a gate line that uh, when there is an Eka event on, you can get from uh, the station to the Royal Brisbane Hospital without having to go through the exhibition. You can actually uh, use the station whether there's an event on or not. Uh, the accessibility will be there. Here's a bit of work that's going on there at the moment. Um, there's, it's only fairly minor, but they're doing a whole lot of site preparation. They're um, uh, creating clearances for the, uh, the corridor um, and, uh, and setting up for what is going to be some work. Now we've had word that the ECA this year isn't going to be um, happening. So we're looking at ways in which we can bring forward some work and, and maximize that opportunity at that site. Now. So as far as the uh, delivery of the project goes, um, we have let the contract, there's three main contracts that we're working uh, on. The one is the uh, contract that is doing the tunnel and station components. So they are doing all the underground um, tunnel and station components. Uh, and that's a, a, a public-private partnership um, with a group uh, consortia that goes by the name of Pulse. Um, and then what we're doing is uh, for the brownfield or where the, where the rail comes out of the tunnel and connects back into the existing rail, uh, that's being done by an alliance called the Unity Alliance. Uh, and then the, the other aspect, which isn't talked about an awful lot, but is, which is, um, but it's still very uh, important is the um, European train control system, which effectively is the signaling system. So if you catch the train now, look out the window, you'd see um, different colored traffic lights as you go along. Well, that gets replaced with the digital signaling system where the controls are all actually in the cabin of the train and there are no actual line side signaling so you don't see the lights outside. So when you go through the tunnel, there is no um, signal lights. It's actually all controlled from inside the cabin of the train. So this um, equipment is mounted on the train and also on the side of the, um, the track and it also um, and what that allows you to do is run the train that's been 
So where are we up to? And um, that was a, a very arduous process, but a very thorough process. Um, and we've got ourselves those three successful contractors. In the meantime, we were doing early work. So you would have seen the demolition uh, over at Wollongabba. There was the um, the former GoPrint site there, plus the, um, the, the land centre. We demolished that. We did a lot of geotechnical drilling. Uh, and then we did a, a, a range of other things. We had to move the um, coach terminal from the transit centre uh, to a site on the other side of Roma Street so that um, we could actually demolish the transit centre. So that, if you recall, the, um, the, the Greyhound coaches and so forth, they were all uh, up on that uh, elevated deck on the transit centre. We had to move them to another location near the um, Roma Street parkland. So there's a range of things we were doing in that early works. Uh, along with that procurement, we're also doing our precinct planning and that's where we're well into that. And we've had a precinct strategy approved by government, which allows us to start looking at well, what will happen in the development around those stations. And that's where our focus is at the moment while we're in this delivery phase. So that as we come to the latter part of delivery, we're in a position to start doing that property development around those stations. website to the um, the email updates and around about every month or so or every couple of months we'll send out an email update but we'll also be updating the site with um, lots of photographs and things that are going on we obviously get out and about in the community so if you see one of our displays please come up and have a chat to the team and uh, they'd be more than happy to hear about it and then um, while the, it's closed at the moment because of um, the COVID-19, but we expect when the uh, lockdown starts getting released, we'll reopen our experience centre. And that's at um, 151A um, Elizabeth Street in the city. And it's really worth going to because we've got a, a, an excellent display there. It's got um, the virtual reality you can get in there and actually wander around the sites to, under your own control using um, using virtual reality. And then there's, quite, there's a, uh, a room there, which is quite a large room, which has got full on surrounded um, uh, cameras, so it feels like you're actually standing on a on a train platform. So I'd really encourage you to get along to that. Um, but uh, you know, by all means, take in in those other um, bits and pieces. Obviously, if anybody's on social media, uh, Twitter and um, uh, and uh, you know Instagram and so forth, we've got different presences there.